Thank you so much for joining again. So right now we'll have the award ceremony for IoT Village and I will let Jay do the speaking. Yes. I do, I speak. Hello everybody. Hello. Yes. It's nice to see so many people in one room. <laughs> so nice, it's awesome. Um, so nice grouping over here, very nice. Okay, so the IoT Village was, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, much better than we expected. Uh, so next year we're gonna come with a lot more devices and a lot more room. Uh, most of the time the space was filled 100% and that's awesome. There were some cases, some moments like 12 o'clock or midnight where it was filled just one seat and that was poor Bogdan. Uh, other than that, people tried. Um, the big spider, the, you know, the biggest price of them all was the first one to get hacked in 15 minutes uh, and then the Chinese doorbell. So the criteria for selection, the way we picked the, the, the equipment was um, something that's a low hanging fruit that has a known vulnerability that's not trivial to exploit, so not just point and click, you have to actually spend more than one minute to do it and that was the replicator, okay? Uh, then something that was prone to have bugs, uh, Chinese doorbell, smart doorbell, bought off eBay that absolutely nobody knew nothing about. So uh, Chinese holes, we can all sympathize with that, sure. Uh, and undocumented, there's not even a manufacturer website, right? Couldn't find any kind of reference whatsoever. So uh, this was hacked in like four hours, three hours, something like that. And then there's the Nest Cam. Actually, the next one is the MicroTik router, uh, and we patched it, so it's fully updated. And that was supposed to be a challenge for everyone to actually come with a zero-day exploit or some sort of vulnerability that was not found or disclosed or was not trivial to find. And that's still being worked on because you can see it's not here on the stage with me. And a Nest Cam, which is still broadcasting freely and nobody managed to hack it yet. So the CTF guys, if you want, they're still up until, I don't know, five o'clock. So when the DEF camp closes, then we're gonna take whatever's left with us home. But if you can find something in either the Microtik or the Nest Cam, then they're still up for grabs. Now, it is my great pleasure to invite the team and guy that won the two equipment. So, Adi, Alex, and Mircea. Okay, so. Adi, you were the quickest, 15 minutes. Thank you. My name is Adrian. I really like routers. Um, uh, the first thing I do when I buy a wireless router is I change the firmware because uh, I don't trust software that I cannot control. And uh, for this one, um, we uh, the, the, the router had the firmware uh, that was bought with. The firmware wasn't upgraded. It's, uh, the firmware was uh, one year old. And the uh, first result on Google was how to hack it. Uh, it was uh, uh, an attack on the home network automation uh, protocol, which uh, lets you do um, an, an on, on authenticated uh, command to it that you just simply run Telnet on it uh, without uh, logging credentials. So we got Telnet on it with root access. So that was the first step. The second step was to kind of brute force through the file system in order to find the admin password. Uh, I got a detour just, I accidentally I uh, managed to um, put it into factory uh, default by accident. And then um, after they get it back, 
uh, I searched some more and I found the admin password in clear text on the file system. So that was basically it. Uh, today we upgraded the firmware to a beta version and uh, the vulnerability is uh, fixed. So remember to go home and upgrade your firmware to your routers. Thank you. Cool. So yeah, remote command execution, telnet and password stored in plain text and a lot of other horrible stuff on the file system. So. Uh, the Chinese doorbell, it's actually pretty cool, you know, it, it talks to your phone and you can see on your phone who's at the door and you can talk to them and you can push the button, what was the, please ring doorbellator. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it has a very poor English, you know, the, the Chinese doorbell doesn't speak English very well, so. <laughs> okay, so uh, congrats guys, Thanks. tell us a few words. Um, hi, uh, so yeah. Uh, we, did, uh, we found a remote code execution and a vendor backdoor on it. And basically that's all we did. Um. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we're, uh, the way in was the, the Android app that is provided to the... Sorry? No, no, no. not a lot of not details. Really? Oh, oh. Okay. but we he gave some... Recording. Okay. So we're going to publish the details since, yeah. okay, this was a known vulnerability. This is not a known vulnerability. All okay. we can say that is that we did find, they did find the vendor backdoor on it, and I'm going to buy another one just to, just to confirm that all the doorbells made by these manufacturers are vulnerable to the same thing. Find the manufacturer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to find the manufacturer in order to do responsible disclosure. Uh, and you guys did, let me put it like this, you guys did blind remote, co uh, remote yeah. command execution, right? It, it was actually pretty trivial. Yeah. Okay, so it just, it was a matter of finding the right command. The yeah. right command, yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, the devices are still up for grabs. So the Mikrotik is still there, and the Nest Cam is still there in broadcasting. And we've made the passwords available, so you have access to the Mikrotik admin interface, and you have access to the Nest Cam account. So, good luck if you, if you feel up to it. Okay, questions? No? Yes? Then thank you all. <laughs>